हेलो एंड वेलकम टू टुडे इज लेक्चर इन माई टेक्निकल सीरीज सन्यासी श्रृंगे गोज बाय द नेम ऑफ कैली कॉर्पोरेट मैसेज इज मी ऑन इंस्टाग्राम I have been studying and wanting to understand rep range for strength 5 to 6 hypertrophy 10 to 17 and endurance something else could you please make a video uh, on this elaborating which is the optimum rep range when we are training particularly for strength and possible for small muscle groups like biceps which is the optimal rep range weight range we should go for so let's get started with rep range The reference points that our good friend gave here is uh, strength. I think. Uh, let me just check here. What was it for strength that he mentioned? Five to six. Strength is five to six. Hypertrophy, he says, ten to seventeen. And endurance. is whatever okay so those are the figures that our good friend gave us here now he wants to understand rep range uh, he was very clear that he wants to understand this from a point of view of strength now obviously when we are doing repetitions it's weights it's going to be strength now this video is particularly very very important for you you know why who has the privilege of giving these numbers our youtube instagram fitness models ha uh, uh, bollywood actor bollywood actress they are anyways not the fitness trainers that we are they can give these figures i and you don't have the liberty of doing this you know why because we are fitness trainers strength and conditioning coach exercise scientist sports scientist we are the boots on the ground we cannot talk like this they can sit online wear whatever they want and talk like this we can't do this we are the real deal we got to understand this from a exercise science point of view and if our concept is clear our client's concept is clear so let's do this entire lecture from an exercise scientist point of view personal trainer point of view strength and conditioning coach sports coach point of view now strength he wants you to understand strength what is this strength what is strength your ability to apply force simple one line definition your ability to apply force so if i have this pen in my hand and i do a this this means my biceps has the force to overcome this resistance that the pen applied whatever the weight is that is strength now before you go to rep range you have to understand these concepts there are few factors that influence the force that is applied which influences the repetition range that comes out of it what are those the first one is i will write a short form here but i will i'll scribble the short forms here but i'll write the full form over here for you length tension relationship length tension relationship very simply i will explain this to you you see this dash that if the weight is say 30 kilos when i curl it at one particular point i will find it very easy to curl usually it is here from here on it ah 
from your help, 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 help. Correct? At a particular length of the muscle, it is very easy to overcome that tension. Length tension relationship. It says, the theory says that when you train, you land up increasing that length. So after some time where it was easy here, it starts becoming easy here. It starts becoming easy here. Then all the way from here you go bam, up. Increases the angle. Adds the muscle fibers in length. And thereby increases the angle. Length the tension. Release. So at a given particular length, the ability to overcome the tension is best. But with training, that length increases. This is length the tension relationship in very simple words. The second thing that you need to know is force-velocity relationship. Force-velocity relationship. Now, <clears throat> what does this say? Force-velocity relationship. The duster. What the, the current weight of this duster? See this. Low force. The weight. Low force. High velocity. See, so fast I can do. Force velocity relationship. Make this duster 30 kilos. Uh, right? High force, low velocity. Now the speed became less because the force was more. Force velocity relationship. So, what this force velocity relationship says is it is inversely variable. I would sincerely advise that if you are really sitting down and trying to understand and learn this, sit with a book and a pen when I am taking a lecture. Note down these points. Go writing it because you may find it a little content heavy, but it is something you need to know. Otherwise, you will permanently be dangling with these numbers. If you don't want that, note this down. So, force velocity relationship says that it is the term is inversely variable. I am writing it here for you inversely variable means force is high velocity is low Velo uh, force is uh, low velocity is high the way i just demonstrated to you now from here understand this you have your c n s central nervous system correct what comes in central nervous system Cerebrum, cerebellum, and the spinal cord. Correct? This entire thing is your central nervous system. What comes out of the central nervous system? Spinal nerve. Correct? I was giving you the example of the bicep. So, spinal nerve comes out from there. What does the spinal nerve innovate? Muscle. So, this whole thing that just happened the length tension, the force velocity. Where did all the signaling come from? It came from the central nervous system. Through the spinal nerve went into the muscle. Now, see here yeah, how I am starting to go over here. From here I straight go here. Now just watch. When this innovation happens to the muscle, if the force is heavy, Velocity is low. Where is the load coming on the muscle? That means the actin and myosin muscle fibers, the active elements, have enough time to do tuck, 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 lock and pull. Correct? If suppose, ulta, reverse, Force is low. Velocity is high. Now, this muscle, it doesn't have that much time to lock and pull. So, you know what the body does? Normal strength training, the rate coding, the term is rate coding, the firing that happens, the signaling that happens from the central nervous system is around 30 to 50 times per second. 30 to 50 times per second. 
बिकॉज आई एम गोइंग सो फास्ट आई एम गोइंग सो फास्ट एंड द टाइम इज नॉट डेयर टू डू द एक्ट इन माइस इन क्रॉस फिलेमेंटेशन दिस रेट कोडिंग गोज अप टू सिक्सटी टू एटी टाइम्स पर सेकेंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग दिस is a very average number because this in well trained athlete can shoot up to 200 times per second in the beginning of high velocity strength training so the term here is not endurance it is high velocity strength training so what usually is 30 to 50 will land up anything between 60 to 200 depending on your conditioning and what kind of movements you do what comes here battle ropes medicine ball slam a uh, box jumps a uh, co your agility ladder all your function a uh, heavy sledge hammer banging on the tire high velocity strength and muscle doesn't have that much time to lock that is why this happens now going further third principle eccentric loading eccentric lengthening eccentric contractions eccentric means this theory says that this can be 130% more than this you know why because when you do this it is only the muscle in myosin cross filamentation when you do this it is not just the muscle it is the passive structures around the muscle like the protein titin this is the reason why you can uncurl 130% more of what you can curl anything depending on your level of condition that is your eccentric now why did i tell you all this when i could have just simply given you this much repetition for strength this much repetition for hypertrophy this much repetition for high velocity strength training or endurance training same but why did i do all this because i want you to understand that as a strength and conditioning coach as a fitness trainer you have to understand that when you do this that signaling and the loading with all of this muscle experiences something called as mechanical loading ml mechanical loading what is this mechanical loading very simple words if i am curling this the duster is actually pushing my hand down i am going against it so the resistance that it is providing is the mechanical loading very simple words so the amount of resistance the mechanical loading that it gives there are mechano receptors on the cell that pick up that loading and start a whole cascade of events which later on leads to hypertrophy increase in volume of the muscle you are understanding me now this mechanical loading there are two options of hitting one is your low threshold motor units one is your high threshold motor units now low threshold motor units is what you use in your daily life or for example a marathon continuous your running ever heard anyone telling i ran 20 km marathon after that my legs became like tree trunks were big muscular legs ever heard no you know why mechanical loading this low threshold motor units do not experience that kind of mechanical loading i ever heard uh, you are washing vessel you are mopping the floor and a biceps and shoulder have become like big no why low threshold motor units if you want mechanical loading to happen and you want that experience to then translate into this you need to hit high threshold motor units how will you hit high threshold motor units you have three ways of hitting high threshold motor units now comes the repetition part pay attention number 1 lift heavy 
Why? Because body here has something called as size principle. That means when you start from a low activity or whatever, your body will only use those threshold motor units which is required. So if I start with this duster, this is low threshold motor units. Now, if you straight pick up heavy, heavy weight, high threshold motor units get activated. Mechanical loading and the whole cascade of events starts. <coughs> but now coming to our question. Strength training, hypertrophy. For the muscle to increase in volume, you need all of this. You need proper length tension relationship. You need proper force velocity, means high force, low velocity. Proper eccentric loading. You need all of this to happen. Only then will you get into the hypertrophy. Now, if you don't lift heavy, can you still activate? So now comes the part where the confusion starts. Can you still activate high threshold motor units which will give you these benefits? This is not going to give you. Only this is going to give you. Will lifting light weights give you that benefits? Yes. How? If you lift light to Failure. Now what happens? See, I do 30 repetitions. One, two, nothing. Low threshold motor means. 30 means failure. Huh? 30 is failure. 15, 20, 25, 26. And now see the speed is gone slow. 27, 28, 30. You kept the number now. Speed became slow. Size principle went from low to high, high got activated. But you know what happened? That high threshold motor unit got activated not because the weight was heavy. It got activated because of fatigue. And the problem that fatigue does is, before tiring the muscle, it tires the CNS. So, because the CNS tires first, the muscle doesn't get the full level of mechanical loading, thereby result level will be less. What you need if you want strength training or you want hypertrophy, you need the muscle to fatigue. You don't want the CNS to fatigue. But if you go 30 repetitions, you land up fatiguing the CNS before the muscle. Who trains like this? Wrestlers, martial artists, athletes, footballers. That's why no matter how much they train. You see our uh, Bajrang Punia, top wrestler, world class wrestler, Olympic medalist, world medalist. Looks like a bodybuilder to you? No, sees fitness. Why? He trains for this. High velocity strength training. So his muscles do not hypertrophy like a bodybuilder but he has all the strength in the world all the strength in the world high velocity strength training he focus is on the red coding not on the muscle hypertrophy because if and that is one of the main reasons why athletes stay away from bodybuilding kind of training because it will hypertrophy your muscle thereby add inertia to your body thereby slow down your movements and complete gone. Performance is gone after that. <coughs> you don't want that. Their weight category will change. They don't want muscle. They want that level of strength and fitness. They train for high velocity strength training. You're understanding me. High reps, full speed. Why? They don't let the actin myosin thing happen. Their focus is here. But when you do a light to full failure, you will hit the high threshold. But if your focus is this, you are not serving the purpose. You want the actin myosin cross bridging to happen proper. You want proper mechanical loading to happen. That is the reason why you train here. You are understanding. 
so the third way of doing it is your what i just spoke about speed training when you do speed training you are again working high threshold motor units so you have these three ways of doing it lift heavy lift light to failure or you do speed training <coughs> depending on what you want so if your goal is like bajrang punia then you will be here this will be somewhere close to 30 repetitions speed now if you want to do strength training and hypertrophy training this 10 to 17 is not the right figure for hypertrophy what is the right figure so if i were to do this and you were to ask me you would be like okay so what is the right figure if we do you've seen weightlifters train does a weightlifter look like a bodybuilder full hypertrophy packed muscle 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 no is he strong very strong why see they are training they pick up pram throw it pick up pram throw it barely any eccentric contraction one two repetitions see the volume of work they put see the rest interval between sets they keep so you know that okay fine so when the repetition range is that low and all these principles do not mean you hit strength training so then what is the correct repetition for hypertrophy so a little more where enough stimulation can be given is a rep range around five because the stimulation is enough but this can go all the way till 30 and i just told you it will still give but it will cause cns fatigue so if it is one you say it is wrong it will not give enough stimulation for hypertrophy if it is 30 you say it is wrong it does it has the cns before the muscle now what to do that is the reason from five onwards the lesser you keep from 30 the more you will be in the hypertrophy zone if you follow all these principles of eccentric loading force velocity strength uh, length tension all of these keep the fatigue as low with the rest interval between sets timed properly use heavy weights with the size principle so that it goes to high threshold motor unit you do all of this and then try to bang anything between more than five not going towards 30 hit somewhere around 8 10 12 that is hypertrophy zone you're understanding me from where this figure came we as strength and conditioning coaches should know it like this understood see in the your activation of motor units is not going to hypertrophy or strength your individual muscle fibers how much mechanical loading you will hit it with is what will determine your strength and hypertrophy between strength and hypertrophy it's the principles that you follow because see when you talk about strength training remember it is increase in muscles volume i'm writing it down increase in muscle volume increase in lateral force transmission how much force goes laterally to, to all the muscles with the costumiers in between. Uh, your coordinated movement, that's why weightlifters are very good in one particular given movement, whether it's snatch, whether it's clean and press, that's it. They excel in that movement. Squat, squat, deadlift, deadlift, benches, benches. They excel in one coordinated movement. So there are many factors that go into strength training. When you go into hypertrophy, you cut out these and you focus only on increasing volume then not only does the repetition come into play all these factors come into play you have to understand repetitions like this this is the reason why i'm telling you follow me on instagram subscribe to my youtube channel ask me now would i have made this video had uh, uh, our good friend sanyasi shringari not asked me all this no i wouldn't have made it connect with me ask me questions and i will give you this kind of strength and conditioning coach personal trainer specific answers not one of the model answers this let them do they look good doing all this we can't do all this and i have told you why i am online 
I want to make sure every single fitness trainer in my country excels to that level. For that, you have to know these concepts. I am coming out with my full curriculum where I am going to talk, uh, talk to you about everything. Technical, business, everything. Going to personally sit down and groom you. This is how I am going to teach. Everything in absolute detail. That's why comment. Tell me which topic you are not understanding. Business related will go on my business series. Technical will come here on the technical. And I will do everything I can to make sure you become that success story that you deserve to become. I hope this repetition range thing is now clear to you. This is not 5 to 6. This is anywhere between 1 to 5. This is high volume. This is not the volume is different over there. We'll do it another day if you want. But I hope this repetition range is somewhere now clear to you that if these principles are not kept in mind, knowing these numbers means nothing. These numbers make sense when you have all these five principles in line. You know what you are training for. You know the volume of training, intensity of training, density of count training, complexity of training, periodization of the training. You know all of that. Put it all together, then it makes sense. Otherwise, those are just random numbers, which our wannabe models on Instagram and YouTube are anyway doing. Let them do it. We are coaches. We cannot talk like that. We have to know all this. See you in my next lecture. Take care.